residential cleaning business do's and don'ts. Hi, I'm Steve Hansen, co-founder of MyHouseCleaningBusiness.com. You know, I've got a list of do's and don'ts for your residential cleaning business. Um, you know, some people might agree with it, some people might not, and maybe the list could be larger than uh, the ones the ones that I selected on here. That's fine, but you know, I've got uh, about four four or five do's, four or five don'ts. Uh, you know, and I thought that these were probably the most important ones for, for you to know. So to begin with, let's talk about the do's. So in your residential cleaning business, you want to, you do want to keep on marketing. The thing that happens is that people get busy and, and business is good and they got, they're, they're closing deals and they stop marketing. Well, you don't want to do that. So always continue to market. So. So that's in your do selection or your do column. Something else you want to do is also always take on applicants. You should always be trying to find good applicants because as you know, as we continue to build the business, we're getting more homes to clean. We're going to need people to help clean those. So we have to develop our teams. So we should always be uh, finding good app applicants. Something else that you should do is that you should have floaters and or on-call team members. Now the reason for this is as you continue, continue to build your team, uh, even when you only have one team of two people or whatever, you're going to have uh, team members that are going to call out. and going to be able to come to work. Well, what do you do? So that means that you step in as the owner, you got to step in and go back out in the field and make sure that the work's getting done. So, you know, consider that. You should, or you should have a, uh, you know, a floater or an on-call person, you know, a team member out there ready to step in and help out when needed. Something else you should do is you should always continue to network. Networking is really the key because if we're continuing to network and we're, in, you know, actually uh, going to networking and, and, and being involved with it, you know, we can actually continue to help market our business and build our network. Because I always believe that it's not who you know, but who knows you. And that's the only way we're going to do that is if we get out there and we attend a networking events. So you should always have a goal when you go to a networking event. Uh, you should always consider always meeting three to five new people each time you go to a networking event. Don't just go over here and sit in a corner, you know, uh, you know have, some, uh, have a drink or, or you know, just spend time with yourself get out and get involved, you know, go out and meet people, find out what they do, you know, show interest in them. Uh, if you do so by building your network, obviously they're going to eventually ask you what you do. So then now will be your time to go ahead and shine and tell them, you know, give them your elevator speech and let them know what you do and how you uh, provide, uh, uh, you know, time for homeowners. Something else you want to do is that you, when you're building your residential cleaning company and you're closing deals, you always want to build in clusters of service areas. So what I mean by that, let's say if you decide to over here that you're going to go to a certain neighborhood uh, based off the criteria of either its income or, or price of home or whatever it may be, go ahead and build up that area. So make sure that, that you can get you know five or six clients in that area so it makes it worthwhile. So when you send a team over there that they're actually servicing five or six of those clients. So you continue to do this, you build these clusters, and that's how you can develop routes too. So it's better to develop clusters to where you got teams going into these clusters uh, to where they're cleaning five or ten homes or whatever it may be, and you continue to build clusters like that and form your routes. Uh, it makes everything much more efficient. So something to keep in mind, that's something you always want to do. Now let's talk a little bit about the don'ts. Um, the one thing that I often see, and you don't want to do this, is don't send a residential cleaner out to clean a commercial space. Just not a good idea. Residential cleaner, their mindset is that of a slower production rate. You know, it, it can be anywhere from, you know, 600 to uh, 750 square feet per hour. You know, every company's different, but on average, they're floating around 700 square feet per hour. So that's, that's slow uh, when you talk about commercial work because on the commercial side, uh, your production rate would probably be around 3,200 square feet to 3,500 square feet per hour. Big difference. 
So never send a residential cleaner out to clean a commercial building because it will take them a long time to clean. Their mindset is more of a detail because they're in a home, in a home setting, so they're a slower pace. Uh, where if you send them out into that commercial uh, facility, it's going to take them a lot longer to clean, you're going to lose money, you didn't price it correctly, and so on and so forth. So always keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing you want to do, and it's still on along the lines, uh, you don't want to use uh, residential production rates uh, when you're pricing commercial accounts. I see this all the time. And that's generally why uh, residential cleaning companies that are going into the commercial sector often get frustrated because they, they can't get any deals. You know, they're, they're always going after small accounts. You know, they're only 2,500 to 3,000 square foot facilities, which is really small, but they're still overpricing them. Sure, sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll, you'll go ahead and you'll price it and you'll get it. Uh, but that's not the norm. Uh, you have to remember that your production rates are much slower on the residential side and you have to remember that your per hour rates are generally higher than commercial. So you put a combination of those together where you have your production rates based on the time to clean and you're billing at a higher rate, that takes you out of, uh, you know, totally out of the competition. So keep that in mind and don't do that. Something else you want to do is don't discount your services. I don't know whoever started this in the resident, residential industry, but you see it every, just about every company does it. You know, they're always offering discounts. And they're doing that because they, they, want, to get, they want to get the person's business. Uh, you know, like I say, you see it all the time. Stop doing it. You cannot make up the profit that you lost when you're discounting. So keep that in mind. Uh, just don't do it. Uh, the other thing that you don't want to do is don't customize your scope of work for each client. So by customizing your scope of work for every client, that means that your team has to look up at the, look at the, job, the, the job sheet and make sure that they're completing the scope of work that, for each and every client. Um, when you have a standardized list of a, of a general clean, let's say, it makes it so much easier. Your team's gonna be able to memorize that. Um, it's gonna make things much better. They're gonna be more efficient. So, you know, don't, don't customize your scope of work. Uh, you know, you're just, you're asking, you're asking for just management nightmare. Eventually that's what it ends up being. Uh, and that's generally where you're going to get your complaints is because, you know, well, in this house here, uh, let me see, oh, we had to water the plants or we had to do other specialty things that we, that we agreed to do for the client. And it just, it, it just doesn't work. Been there, done that. Uh, that's where I came up with a rule of just using a standardized scope of work. So much easier. Uh, we, we've become so efficient that way uh, that it made a huge difference. Uh, it made a huge difference in our teams. Uh, they were, weren't getting frustrated because, you know, they had to pull out the list and they, they had three or four things at this house that they had to do and then the totally different at the next house and, and so on and so forth. So just don't do it. Uh, you'll, you'll thank me for not doing that. So anyway, you know, that's all I have, uh, just a short list. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, go ahead and click on the like and share button. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and uh, click on the subscribe button and you'll find uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, videos on uh, how to build a successful cleaning business. So until next time, we'll see you.